Hi everyone, thanks for watching my video. In this video, I will share my experience and also information I learned when I was building my own bicycle since 2019. I never took any course or never worked in a bicycle shop. I'm merely an amateur person who has the dream of building my own bicycle since I was in high school. It has been so many years and then finally last year I pushed myself to accomplish this dream straight as an amateur who know nothing about building a bicycle whose knowledge still stays in the 80s, 90s. Now, before I start, I thought building bicycle was just uh, taking parts, taking a frame, put together until I was chatting with a local shop mechanics who also had an interest in building his own bicycle and then we had a very good time chatting. He showed me his own bicycle that built by himself. I realized there were a lot of things advanced in the bicycle industry in the past 20 years. So in today's video, I will try to share as much as I can and try to make sense to you. And uh, just feel relaxed. Building bicycle is fun because you can put everything that you like all together. No matter it looks uh, very beautiful, very cool or ugly, as long as it's a bicycle that you like to, to ride, you feel cool to yourself, then it's a bicycle that will help you to make you healthier. Because riding bicycle actually, it, it gives your body a lot of um, benefits. It uh, trains a lot of parts of the muscles on, you, on your body. So uh, to start getting into this video, uh, I just want to say that uh, if you still feel you need something professionally done, then of course you can either get all the parts you like and go to a local shop and have them done for you, or you can ask them to get the parts for you and then just you all you do is only pay the fee, tell them what how you want it to be customized and then have them done for you. But just saying you may lose the fun of uh, building by yourself because yes, you may find some sometimes frust frustrated you because uh, things you try to put on doesn't match or something like that, but that is a fun part of building. Okay, so uh, building your own bicycle, you can do either from the frame or from the parts. Building a bicycle is never a one-way direction, saying you get a frame first, then you get the parts, and then this put together, no. I can give you a very simple example. I like a frame, so I purchase a frame first. Then this frame has a head tube that is uh, tapered. Then I find the fork that it has tapered head, that, that head tube. If the frame has a uh, fit press, uh, BB that I have to find the press fit BB for it. So building a bicycle from a frame, meaning you buy the frame that you like first, then you do several measurements on it, several areas, parts. Then from there, you try to find the parts that will fit with this frame. Or you can do it the other way. You have the parts that you like to use and then you try to find a frame that can fit the parts you like to use. For example, I want to use uh, Shimano Altigra 6700, which is a road bike with 53 uh, large chain ring. So I need to, that one, uh, you can either choose with uh, English thread or you can choose uh, with press fit, but that one was designed for English thread. So you need to find a frame that is English thread. You cannot find its press fit because the, the spindle of the crankset is too long for a press fit. And second example, if I want to ride a bicycle, uh, sorry, if I want to build a bicycle that is for 12 speed, 12, 12 speed meaning your wheel, your rear wheel chamber space has to be 142 millimeter. If you buy a regular frame that has 135 millimeter in the back, the ring or the wheel you want to use will not fit in because it, it just 135 is the space of the frame. 142 
you cannot put 142 into the 135. So then you have to, in that way, you have to find a frame that is designed to fit the rear hub that is 142, sorry, 142 millimeter. So that is why I say that building bicycle is not too hard as long as you have a clear mind that which direction you want to start. You want to start from the frame or you want to start from the parts. Okay, so the first one, uh, this is a mountain bicycle. It's a new old stock frame. It's felt Redemption 1. And um, this frame has uh, some specialty that even need to kind of say more in need advanced th thinking. So um, this one, because it has an equal link, that leaves the space behind the seat post uh, being restricted. So when you put a uh, front der derailleur, you need to really think about what models and what kind of thing that you you can put here because it really restrict. What I mean that because this one is actually a down pool. See all the cable lines is in the in the bottom part, so it goes down, and then and then comes up. So it's a bottom pool, but the space here is very limited. Meaning, if you want to use a dual pool uh, from the derailleur, not possible. I tried because I I purchased one, and then turns out in order to put in lock in the proper space, the real derailleur will be almost touching this link, which is not good. So you really need to find a derailleur that is only but bottom pool. So you can have the space saved up here that is not going to touch it. And then um, the main thing that I talk about that what uh, do you want to start from the frame or do you start from the parts is because, for example, I like this frame, so I purchased it. What happens is uh, because the space restriction, I cannot put dual pool front derailleur as I like. And then this one is a uh, it's, uh, this one is uh, English thread, 68 millimeter. So if you are a person prefer the press fit, no way. You have to use the the English thread. And besides, I use the GXP model so that I can use the SRAM GX crank. Then what else will affect is uh, the Head tube is the most important part. This one is the old style, so it is using oversized and then integrated headsets. I had to purchase separated separated because it didn't come with the frame. And then I had, fortunately, I had another Cannondale mountain bicycle that was built in uh, made in two thousand eight, which had the same design. So I realized what it, what kind of headset it is. So this will be like uh, you have to buy the parts based on how your the frame is designed, not based on how the parts you like. If you like to use a straight tube forty four, no way, because this one is actually oversized. If you put a regular headset here, there's no way you can fit it because it regular is too small. And also, I made this. This fork is actually a taper, so the bottom part, why it is red, the top is black, is because this is for straight tube size. This one is for taper size. So the top is down reduced to one to one eighth. The bottom part is one and a half inch. Okay, this bicycle I built by myself from scratch in 2019. Originally, I was thinking to make a gravel, but uh, some people find the information for me saying this actually was for cyclocross. So I changed my direction to build in cyclocross way, not in gravel bicycle way. So yes, depends on what kind of frame you purchase. You may need to build in different way as you plant. So original some parts that I originally thinking to use to use, I end up changing my, my direction because it wouldn't work in that way. 
As you can see, this one why it's a cycle cross because the top tube is flat and the bottom part inner part so that it can be easily put on your shoulder to carry around when you are in the race. This one is made by Jamie's model is Nova Sport. And what I learned from this frame is uh what's my complaint about this frame. The rear leg chamber space was designed for 130 millimeter wheel a uh, hub. However, if you go online in the market, every hub that is for this brake, minimum 135 millimeter. I tried very hard for two months. I cannot find any hub that is this brake but in 130 millimeter. So literally I had to expand this aluminum frame a little bit wide just to put in this 135 millimeter hub in. I know people will say it's not good. It's aluminum frame and it may damage the structure, but I have no way. If I put in a 130 millimeter regular hub, here comes another problem. I don't even have a mount space for either cantilever or the C brake, no C brake holes, no cantilever brakes holes. So, what should I do? Maybe I, I, maybe I have to turn it into a fixie, without without even any brakes. Just uh, use your chain to stop your bicycle. So, um, the second thing that uh, why choosing a frame is important is because uh, again this frame. Uh, as obvious as you can see, it's just uh, simply the cable comes from the top, so it's a top pull to the front derailleur. However, here comes a big problem that when I was building this one. I do not know why for road bicycle related uh, models, front derailleur is very hard to find top pull. I really do not know why. It's either brace on or maybe some models, uh, I think it's called direct mount, yes. So either direct mount or brace on, these two are the major models. Top pull from the derailleur, I couldn't find. It's either I found one or two, but it doesn't fit what I need, or I couldn't find it at all. I, I cannot recall very clear now, but I do remember at least I really couldn't find it. So what happened is, uh, fortunately, this bicycle had a design in the base part that I was able to screw on a cable guide pulley, if you can see there. So at least I can turn this top pull cable, make a loop, comes up to this front rear. So I can still use, this is a down pull. So I'm using a down pull on the top pull frame. That normally you will think impossible because there's just no no space for me to put the cables in down there and the going up so i have to go cable have to come from the front going down there make a loop up to connect with this down pull from the railer and the other reason that why i have to find rules bicycle specific is because uh, if I'm using mountain bicycle crank set, then everything would be happy and fine. But I choose to use uh, a crank set that is for road bicycle. This is Altigra 6700. The outer chain ring is 53 teeth. A mountain bicycle's front derailleur, even if you purchase Shimano XT or XTR, their front derailleur maximum capacity uh, fitting is no more than 40 or 44 teeth. I think the newer model is even worse, only able to fit up to 40. Uh, the old Shimano parts back in the 80s or 90s, they may be able to fit up to 48 or 50 if you are using for the triple chain ring. But again, you have to find a very old model because the, I think, after 2000, all the triple chain ring, the outside has dropped down to 44. The reason I say this is because my bicycle that I, I had when I was in senior high school, the outer chain ring, it was Shimano Exage. I'm not sure, do I pronounce it properly? E-X-A-G-E. 
That one has outer chain ring, 48 teeth. And it was a seven speed, so three by seven. And then I was riding that bicycle for uh, probably four or five years since I was 16 years old. So that front derailleur at least able to work with 48. I'm not sure would it work with 50. I haven't dig, up, dig it, that part out yet. However, for modern days, if you use mountain bicycle, their front probably only able to handle maximum front large chain ring 40 or 44, and that's it. You need to go higher, you have to start to find road bicycle parts. So I had to purchase this one specifically can, and also not every front derailleur for road bicycle can fit in a very large or say older design uh, piece. Because when I tried to find this one, again, I was thinking just, okay, find road bicycle model. I realized there are front derailleur that only fit no more than 50. This one is a 53. I need to find the front derailleur at least a 53 or 56 as maximum. So this one is made from micro shift. This one can fit 53. I forgot is a maximum fit or able to fit. Uh, maybe this one can fit up to 56. I cannot quite remember now. So again, uh, it's important to think you want to build a bicycle, start from the parts you like to use or the frame you like to use. If you, you like to start with the frame, be aware there are things that may not fit what you like. For example, I got these wheels before the frame even arrived. And turns out this hub is for 135. This frame uses 130 in the rear chamber, but this frame is using this brake. And nowadays, even though this frame is not really that old, 2013 model only, but uh, they probably made a special deal with Formula, their company, to make specific for, the, for this model. But even I try to find in Formula, their website, I cannot even find they have a hub that is only for disc brake, but 130 millimeter. And uh, let me see if I can find any other information. Okay, so uh, uh, this is my canaries. So this frame I purchased in early 2018 or 19, I forget. Uh, this one, I specifically choose it, even though it's an old design, but I still like to use uh, cantilever brake. However, also if one day I think I want to use this brake. So this frame is both, uh, you can use both either this brake or cantilever brake. And uh, this, this frame does not have too much problem. So again, I choose a frame. So I have to design based on the frame. This frame has a straight head, so when I choose the front, front fork, I have to find the one that is a straight tube, not the tapered. And this is a 26 inch, so I need to find either 27.5 or 26 inch specific fork. Uh, this one actually is for 27.5, but it fits uh, 26 anyway. So if you want to ask uh, any problem, no. It actually fits quite well because I do see online some people they are asking about can you use it yes you can use it do not worry the clearance just a, a bit more than a regular 26 uh, if you use a regular 26 I think at the top bar just a little bit lower compared to 26 7.5 it's a little bit higher that's it nothing really changed and then uh, this one doesn't really have much problem, but it's a bottom, it's a bottom pool. So everything guides to the bottom. So when I purchased the uh, front derailleur, it's been, it's not what I want to use, it's what I can use. So again, I based on the frame. So I have to use a uh, front derailleur that is a bottom pool or at least a dual pool. I actually personally recommend if there's enough space, I mean like, like this frame, there is a big clearance. So, if you can, I personally recommend you, you buy the dual pool by Shimano or by SRAM, which will be better that later on if you want to change it to a different frame that you can still use it, for example. 
my Cannondale 2008 uh, Coffee F29. This is top. This one is a top pool. So this SRAM from the railer I newly purchased. This one is a dual pool. So that the one I can use for this frame or for this frame. If you just purchase a top pool only or bottom pool only, then when you need to modify your bicycle, then you may find you need to buy a new parts. So uh, everything about it until here is all about do you if you if you build from your bicycle. Then and also uh, some people if they prefer to use the PF the press fit then. This frame is for English thread, so you have to buy an English thread B, uh, BB. You cannot use the press fit that you that you like. Okay, so now on reverse side, some people say, uh, "I want to build a bicycle because I would like to use certain parts." Then it's reverse way of thinking. You need to find a frame that has the design that fits everything you need. For those saying you like the press fit, so this frame is out because it's English thread. For those saying I, I like only this brake, I don't like to use a V brake, C brake, or cantilever. And this one may be just a bit extra, but you still have this brake. But but like my Jamie's, if you say you don't like to use this brake, you just like to use the C brake. Unfortunately, the gem is Nova Sports. It was only designed for purely disc brake. You don't even have a mount space for C brake or cantilever brake. And also, like I, I was showing for the um, for the mountain bicycle. Like for example, this is the Kennedy. So th because of this one, I realized that Felt Redemption One has used has to use the oversized reducer because this one is it's all, also I remember it's a the start diameter is 55 and then reduced to 40 uh, one and the one eighth inch top this one is still straight but my um, field the redemption I I ended up because the fork I want to use is a tape is a tapered, so I had to choose the re reducer. The top part reduced to one and one eighth, bottom part reduced to one and a half inch. So just this information you need to be clear that what kind of design that you want. And uh, Usually, if you really want to mix with two sides of wheels, it's not a big problem because I think the very first uh, bicycle that has two different wheel sizes was made by Trek in 2009, I think. It had a 29-inch front tire and 26-back tire. And uh, um, I think nowadays people call it a mullet bicycle. But uh, just let you know that uh, um, if you choose a frame that it fits for 26, don't even think to put a 27.5 because you may not have the room to fit in. And 26, 27.5, if you if you want to put in a 29, some frame if they do the plus design, they may be able to. I think it's called 27.5 plus. Then you may be able to put a 29 inch wheel. But uh, overall speaking, people will say, no, it better stay with how the bicycle was designed. Um, my road bicycle. This bicycle was designed for 10 speed. I modified it to, I, I put on 10 speed, sorry, 
11 speed shifter and then 10 speed cassette but the maximum i increased to 32. the original derailleur was shimano 105 and it was uh, only designed up to 28 it was short cage and then the original cassette was only 11 to 25. I wanted it to be 32 for climbing, so I had to took down the original short cage derailleur and put on this one, GS model. This one is uh, 11 speed, so I can use up to the 32. But if I have a 10 speed uh, derailleur, that is also GS or SGS, I have no problem to use the 11, 11 speed shifter to pull up to the, the last gear that I want to use. So just remember, really ruler is only being taught how, how far to move or say how, how deep to move to as long as it has that space. It's, it doesn't matter that you use the shifter with the same speed as your really ruler or your shifter is one speed higher. I could simply use an 11 speed shifter with a 10 speed rear derailleur to fit with this 10 speed cassette as long as it can it has the leg the length of the leg that it can fit to the last one. And also one one thing very important. Whatever your real derailleur was designed for, you have to use the same type of chain for it. For example, when I was using a 10 speed rear derailleur. I could use a 10 speed chain or 11 speed chain without any problems. But when I move to 11 speed real derailleur, I have to, there is no options. I have to use 11 speed chain. The reason is because, even though it sounds, uh, the reason why I said this is because theoretically it's not wrong if you use 10 speed as well. The spacing is just a little bit different. However, it's the guide pulley the design of the pulley for 11 speed is different from 10 speed. If you take a closer look, the pulleys for 11 speed is longer, tend to hold the chain better. So if you use a 10 speed, the pulley will be kind of like actually grinding to your chain. The center of the metal piece, the silver part, if you use a 10 speed chain on 11 speed rear derailleur, the guided pulley will, it will be like, like hitting all those silver parts. So you have to use the matching speed for your, for your de derailleur. If your derailleur is 10, you can use 10 or 11, but if your derailleur is 11 speed, you can only use 11 speed One more chain. thing I almost forget to mention is that um, <clears throat> I previously didn't know until recently I was watching a video about installation. Um, actually, this loop is kind of important. Uh, general videos that when you look for, they only tell you just uh, put this on. However, if you look at Shimano's uh, manual, uh, the person whom mentioned that uh, it was in the other languages so i cannot really show you but um i was very surprised because i never seen that information in shimano's uh, manual maybe it's only specific for um dealers or the mechanics depends on different models the loop which is the diameter uh or say the radius it will be Different. Some models need a larger loop, some models need a s smaller loop. So that you probably need to find with your derailleur brand and also model specific. But in general speaking, is uh, make this one a smooth, a, a smooth circle so that uh, when you pull, the housing will not generate friction too much to the cables inside, so that you will not be spending too much force to shifting the gear but also uh, don't make it too big too too small or say too sharp it will make it too hard to shift but if too big too excessive 
it may also be causing some problems as well. Building your own bicycle is fun because you can build the wheel if you are interested in. I build your own bicycle in the way you like, like this one. I build myself, build myself, build myself, and also the hub. I, I choose the hub I like to use, the, the ring, the knee post, the spoke. Okay, the last part is the stem. The stem length varies based on personal preference. However, based on I play that wrong a little bit. Of course, if you are doing road bicycle, cyclocross, gravel bicycle, uh, you prefer, or cross country, you prefer a little bit more speed gaining, meaning you lower your upper body, then you need to get the stem that's longer usually maximum is 12 or 13 but i think if you want a special mate 14 or 15 but i think those are way too long 12 is already long enough um but if you are doing downhill or old mountain uh i cannot find a quite uh kind of guidance information online so only based on my personal experience uh, if you are doing all mountain or downhill, don't make this more than eight uh, centimeter. Or to be more safe, don't make it more than six. For all mountain, eight may be okay. But if you're doing downhill, eight probably is way too long. Because uh, remember, longer the stain, lower your your upper body will be lower, even though just one or two degree. When you do the downhill, it feels different and for all mountain because you are going to conquer all kinds of problem the the condition of the road so i think either six or eight will be a more proper length can okay but maybe consider a bit long eight probably is okay six maybe more maneuverability okay so uh Okay, so these are the information that I Okay, so these are the information I would like to share with people who also have the interest in building their own bicycles. So just remember, uh, you can either build your own bicycle based on the frame or based on the parts you want to use, but just keep in mind, unless you are using a group set, then it would be a lot easier to find the frame. Otherwise, only focus on one or two parts that you like to use, and then give your, yourself a, a adequate uh, freedom or say the space to move or to make more choice if the frame that fits the parts you like to use also have some other things that doesn't match what you want. So you have room to pick and also you will not be too frustrated finding a frame fitting every part that you like to use because based on my experience yes it exists but to find a frame that fits every single part you want to use kind of not that easy because it there will be always just one or two parts like saying i can find a frame that is sticks a break that is uh for road and then that is also for cycle cross, but it turns out it's a top pool, it's not a bottom pool. And then causing me a problem to find parts and the rear chamber space is different. And then for mountain bicycle, I would like the frame, but because of the space between the seat pool and also the equilink, it, prohibited me from using dual pool front derailleur. I had to use specific only bottom pool. And the, also the, um, fortunately the, the fork that I can choose, either I want to use straight or tapered, but for my cycle cross, that one, the design of the head tube was for 
tapered. So if I want to use the straight, then I have to find a reducer to reduce the bottom part from the tapered from one and a half inch to one to one eighth size. Those are more easy to fix, so it's not a big deal as long as you know what parts to find. But just some other things like I even had to find the cable guided pulley and I was very lucky. I found it online in the beginning. I didn't even know that parts exist. It took me a while, probably almost one month searching online. It's all about the, the keywords that you use. And sometimes the result Google gives you doesn't match exactly what you're expecting. So um, just want to say building your own bicycle is very fun. I do encourage people to at least build one. Uh, no matter how to build or all from scratch, meaning starting from looking at the frame and then the washers, the headset, every single tiny part you all look by yourself. It's a lot of fun, but just um, don't be frustrated when you find something doesn't match. It happens because unless you build it, you exactly make the frame by yourself. Otherwise, you cannot find a frame 100% fits your need. But it always is some learning and also it's very fun to build your own bicycle because you work on it and also later when you ride you will know every single part the province because you, you build it so whenever you ride something's not right you immediately know where to look into the province so uh this is the video that is sharing with people uh, how to build your bicycle your own bicycle as an amateur and I hope you like this and I will make some more videos later on. Bye.